Hey guys, Scott here, the head designer of Rogue Home Cinema. Today I'm going to check out some latest news and reviews or showcases of home theatre, home cinema, uh, and The Block, so big Aussie um, channel for home, home improvement, and it's really awesome to see that they, uh, we knew it was going to happen, right? They're going to embrace home cinema as being a really valuable component of one's home. Let's face it, with COVID now, remember that big holiday you're going to have last year? didn't happen, right? So investing into your home, making that more fun, making it more adventurous is a pretty cool thing to do. And uh, it's awesome to see them embracing that with home theater. So my team said, Scott, you should have a look. Uh, some things have been done really well. Some things haven't been done so well from a engineering perspective. I know these guys are all about making things look pretty and that can be sometimes a matter of taste, but let's have a bit of a look at these rooms and see where they've done well and where they could have done maybe much better so you can learn as well how to avoid maybe some of the pitfalls. So this one is actually the winning um, project, I believe. I found three online, maybe these more, so I've just had a quick look up to find the three and let's go through them. So here we've got, first of all, I mean, I'm a big fan of completely immersive experiences, which means a darker toned room, which ensures that your focus stays on the screen. So the darker room's awesome. And I know some people might struggle with the whole black ceiling thing, but absolutely every time everyone loves it. And you see, you know, uh, cafes, restaurants, a lot of commercial spaces that go on black ceilings. Why is that? Well, it feels like infinity. It doesn't feel smaller because you can't really reference with your peripheral vision where the ceiling stops and starts, it kind of feels bigger. And the idea of cinema is to feel like you're, well, anywhere that director wants you to be. And not reminding you, making sure the room doesn't remind you that you're actually in the real world, which is why a cinema room shouldn't look like a living room or a bedroom or a bathroom or a carport. All of these rooms have a certain purpose and they've got to have their own feel. And I, and I love the intrigue and certainly not just the intrigue and the curiosity that a dimly lit room and a, and a place of mystery offers uh but also um some of the wow factor you know the whole idea of going out to the movies is like wow factor so here we are we've got uh, i love the i love the ceiling componentry that's really cool audio visual wise trying to find it obviously they've tried to conceal that unfortunately you know a white projector that's really annoying uh we just build boxes around them, uh, cautious of the ventilation. So you need to make sure air is coming in and out of that freely. But we can usually create a box system where unless you're looking at a certain angle, you, you won't actually notice that white projector. So that would be a nice addition to keeping it dressed up the way that these guys want. Um, now, unfortunately, the cheap projectors are gonna typically be white. So uh, I can see judging by the tiny lens and the style of this unit, you know, it's a, it's a pretty budget projector. So maybe boxing it up to the go. Now a box might take more time and effort and cost, but if you're DIYing it, easy way to make it happen. Now, the other thing I see here is um, we've got like a velvety curtain uh, that can have some acoustic elements, but not a lot. Probably this wall here is a really good spot for a potential reflection that could be controlled with acoustics. And definitely the back wall, center back wall, great spot to control the sound that's flying from the front speakers, from the screen, past the seats. They're gonna hit the back wall and they're gonna come back again. That's what we call a, a first order, a first reflection. It's very strong, it's very distracting, it's not very comfortable, and it can be a real limitation to turning up the volume and maintaining clarity and comfort is a real big thing there. So missing some acoustic elements already in this room. Uh, I do like, you know, the light and brighter artwork works really well at the back of the room because of course, when you've spun around looking at the screen, you, you can't see that behind you. So light and bright towards the back of the room, more dark and, and soft and um, non-reflective tones between the seat and the screens, what I like to see. Now, they've gone darker, but check it out. Bench top, I'm guessing the screen's above that. So a white or even a reflective, like a glossy, uh, there's plenty of black surfaces, which is still reflective. The projection of all the lights off in the room, the projection screen lights up the room. And the harshest, harshest, harshest spot for light off the projector screen is gonna be right under or, or, or the perimeter around it. And I'd say that they're gonna get 
are pretty significant, particularly the back row. They've got a bit more angle onto the top of that um, bench there. They're going to get like a mirror image of the screen. And that is, that's really distracting. It's really annoying. So we go sort of darker matte finishes or try and keep things away from the screen at the front of the room. Uh, we'll keep some distance or even better, the screen is sort of forward and all the stuff kind of is flush with the screen. But that's going to cost you space and cost of equipment, um, cost to fit out and and space, the cost of space, space is really, really resource that is, you know, probably one of the most valuable, uh, which is why so many people are doing cinemas at home because they're not using all the space at home. It's like a wasted space, it's underutilized and doing a cool cinema room is definitely gonna get you in there, taking advantage of it. All right, so can't see any Atmos speakers, so maybe, you know, the budget might not have allowed them the overhead sound and look, you're better off doing good bass layer sound um, well before you just add more and more and more speakers in. So I, I totally get that. Let's have a look here. Yeah, so screen, look, the screen is like right next to that white, what looks like a marbly looking, that's gonna reflect real bad. It's gonna be a bit of a nuisance, it's a distraction to the viewer. Um, not very nice. Oh, there's some, looks like some speakers there, so it looks like they might have scored some Atmos speakers or worse, if that is actually a surround channel speaker, that's not where we put them. Uh, surround speakers really need to come from a little bit of above ear level. It's what we call the base layer. And firing in and across the room. Like if the person in the seat to the far right has no chance of hearing that speaker if it's firing right down on the far left of the room. It doesn't work and it's the wrong angle as well. So we really need delineation between all the speakers in, in both the vertical and the horizontal planes to actually experience the technology properly. So this is the engineering component. Now, these guys might not have seen a specialist that could help them on the engineering. I know in our designs, we start with the engineering and then we look at the fit out, the cabinetry and all that stuff. And to start with engineering, we start with the room size and the number of seats because it's all about what the experience is in the seat fundamentally. So it looks like, I don't know, maybe there's something missing here. They might be putting something on in the wall in between these lights. Maybe it looks like potentially the candy bar is gonna get stacked up. So it's a little bit tucked off to the side. So hopefully not too reflective from the visual element, uh, but that could be an issue. Uh, we like to see candy bars a little bit more tucked away than that. Um, sort of some texture on the back wall. That's a nice effect. I do like that. Um, it looks like they've you know, built quite a suitable um, riser and look, they do have some lighting here as well. Now this is clever back up here. Um, of course, you don't want to trip over the riser. So some lighting around that um, allows you to get up onto the stage seating, which are on the rise um, platform. So we call them riser. Um, the stage I'd, I'd call the front of the room, um, the front stage up here. So it's a bit of decor, that's really cute. Quite a yeah, short throw on the projector. Um, can be good because the lens can have to open really, really, really wide because it's quite close, so it have to be a really wide lens. And that's an advantage because a wide open lens will allow more light through. In fact, with, you know, given that this projector's got, you know, quite small lens systems, and look, they're not gonna be glass and they're probably a polymer sort of design, then opening it wide can actually let quite a bit more light through, which is a bonus. Um, however, if you go too wide with too much um, lens shift, so, so disparity between the top of the lens and the top of the screen, then the geometry is not going to be very friendly. That is, um, we can have some curvature because the image is spread out so wide that it's, it's hitting the curves of the lens. So I do like a, a nice open lens for brightness, but in some of the cheaper models, that is going to introduce a lot of distortion, a lot of curvature on the image. So maybe this these projectors ease it back a little bit. Um, and look, noise factor, if you if you really crank these projectors up to, to high brightness, because I know the cheaper brands really pride themselves on being really bright, um, but noisy. So maybe the fan noise can be an issue. And that's another nice reason for boxing this, the, the projector. You can help to limit some, some noise. Or if you do 
a proper good projector box. You can eliminate the noise almost, um, but you're going to need glass ports that don't distort the picture and color. And you're going to need potentially your own intake and exhaust system just for the projector box. So something which um, on a budget room, you're not going to put all that expense and effort into the engineering, the build, the fit out and the parts. Um, but just something to be mindful of if someone's looking to build a, a truly performance cinema at home. Um, just, just some things that are a bit different. All right, let's have a look. Yeah, cool. Fancy lights. I like the light, Art Deco look and feel myself. Um, you know, reasonably, you know, it's got a bit of sheen on that paint. So maybe dropping that sheen down a level. Um, something like Tubman's Contemporary Matte is, is quite a nice, very, very low sheen paint. Uh, and applies very well as well because some paints are horrible to apply on the wall so it's nice having a paint that does you know hide some of the imperfections let's have a look here so i'd, I'd hope i'm just going to look at this riser again it looks like it's only maybe 200 in height this sort of riser here so of course you need sight lines so the people's heads here need to be able to need to go through and see the bottom of the screen. And, and I'm just a bit concerned that maybe, because that's not a super high looking cabinet and the, and the screen's right on it. So that could be say 600 above floor level. Um, if only a turner mill riser, you probably, so, I mean, you, you certainly wouldn't be able to recline the back row and, and see the bottom of the screen. Um, I'd, I'd imagine the back row would have to stay upright if you're going to clear the front row. But of course, if the front row are reclined, it's going to improve your sight lines. So, you know, there's a little bit of compromise with, there's actually a lot of compromise in two row cinemas. Um, think of a car, a sports car. How many doors does it have? It's like two. How many seats does it care about? Has it worried about two? And what's its performance? Like, it's awesome. So the more seats you need to support, the more compromise is going to be, particularly when you've got a small area, like a car to work in, home cinema, always constricted with that thing again, real estate, size of the room is a big deal. Now, I always try and have our clients focus on how many seats do you really need? That is how many people in the family who will watch often week by week at any given time, of course. So most people would say they've got a family of five, they'll say, look, five seats are the most important. Um, uh, I've got a family of two right now, but four seats are important because we'll entertain a lot, we'll have other couples over. However, we may entertain with sports and things, so we actually introduce uh, bean bags and like a bar stool back row, which can fill the house out, but they're secondary seating. And our main row, like in our room, our main row would be between these two. Why? Because sonically, I bet you that's where the sound is best. And we can get our, well, there's no issues with sight lines. It actually saves a whole lot, bunch of money. It's not paying for so many luxurious seats. Um, a lot of benefits, but you know what? Number of seats is a personal thing, though I usually find people going for more seats than they really end up using that often. And for the few people that really use the room often, they're actually now sitting in a crappy seat or a compromised seat, more compromised than it needs to be. Um, it shouldn't be crappy. The room's been well engineered. Those compromises will be managed. If the room hasn't been engineered and you throw two rows of seats and chances are you could be sitting in a spot where the base cancels itself out because it hits the walls, knocks itself out and you're sitting in a hollow spot. And I can tell you, that kick drum, that 50, 60 hertz kick drum, that is often a cancellation point in a room's around four slash five meters in size. So you look out for that. If you love your music concerts, love your bass, and your seats are sitting right where the bass knocks itself out, hits the walls, cancels each other out, right in that frequency, it's gonna suck. I can tell you, you can get the world's biggest subwoofer from that room, you sit in that spot, it's just gonna cancel out again and you hear nothing in that frequency. So it's really important where the seats go. Um, less seats we have to engineer for, the higher performance you're often gonna get. Um, almost guaranteed. So here we go, okay, let's have a look this way. Yeah, nice neat room. Look, the curtains are always, always a nice, lush, luxurious way to go. And 
if you go for more of a sheer curtain in areas um, and, and definitely wash the light down them, then you won't see through the sheer, though behind is where we can put cool acoustics, hide some ugly looking acoustics for that matter, uh, and speakers. And we can get the speakers where we need them down at that ear level and hidden. So this sort of curtain here looks like a, a, a very tight weave, like a velvet. Sound is not going to enjoy getting through that. So if there are speakers behind that, you've killed them. Like you might as well don't buy fancy speakers if you're going to do that. Um, though I have a feeling their surround speakers are actually up in the ceiling, coming from the wrong angles. Two rows of seat, really, really, really got to focus on where you put those surround channels because you're having to serve multiple seats. And on a budget, you might not be able to afford multiple surround channels, which is absolutely preferred. Um, in this room, I can't see them. So even more critically, I mean, if the speaker is back here firing down, how much is this person hearing of that speaker? It's like sub-zero, man. It's not, a, it's not a good approach. So, um, but look, nice, nice looking room. And for a team that haven't, you know, really focused on the engineering, then look, I see this all the time. So it's not to say that they've done a terrible job. This is typically what a lot of the industry sort of present because it's easy to install some speakers that are just flushed in the ceiling rather than positioned down low because it's harder to make them look pretty without knowing how to do that. So it's, it's not their fault that this is the result because we see it all the time. Um, and we see the online stores selling packages like this all the time. So what's one meant to think, right? Like that, that's how you do it. Let's have a look at another one. Very cool, cool couple, cute couple. Got the riser back here. We got a chaise, a loungy, I love that. We've got like a, like a bean baggy style lounger in the front sort of edges of our room as well. That's that secondary seating I was talking about. But yeah, there's a lot of real estate in the middle here, which would be much better seats more middle of screen. So there's a lot of space here. Like the best seat in the house is probably here. And there's no seat here. Now the back lounge, right on the back wall, you don't get the effect of, of like sound around you when there's a there's a wall there. You can't get blood out of a stone. You can't get sound out of a solid wall. Now maybe the speakers in there, again, this fabric looks way too tightly knit to allow sound through. So, if, I mean, if there is a speaker in there, then it travels that far, like, like you know, what do you got? Half a foot for it to project a great big wide sound. It's just not going to happen. You need a little bit of distance to, to get big sound. So we like to have our seats away from the walls because we want our surround speakers to open up and sound really big. We also want our seats off the wall because the bass builds up. It actually really compacts near the walls there's a high pressure zone there and that's where you get that's where the bass lingers so the bass hits and it should be clean and snappy like boom and it's gone it's like wow like a kick drum at a rock concert bang you know instead this is going to be like boom it's going to like resonate for like a half a second or a second it's going to linger and that's not clean sound so really the best seats in the house here where there's no seats so that's a bit of a bummer. Again, you know, little budget projector. It looks like, what have they spent the last guys? Oh, they spent like 23 grand, man. So look, you're not gonna, gonna get super high-end audio and video with that. So it makes sense that it's probably an Epson. Makes sense that like something like that's in there. Star ceiling, rocking it. Obviously star ceiling. Like the last room was a dark ceiling. So it feels spacious and infinity. How about the stars, right? Beautiful. You lean back, starry night. Our, our mind will unconsciously feel like that atmosphere of infinity, of anywhere. And it's a great job, right? Because you, you want these rooms to feel special and different. So definitely got some nice class in this. Darker bench top, which is good, though that thing's going to be shiny. So the projection screen is just going to have like a mirror image below it. Um, yeah, the mirror points for the screen is, is, is going to be a bit of a killer here. Another thing, look, they've got the little side tables, which are pretty cool. Like you need, trust me, you need a munchies table and you need a drink holder. 
because particularly you, you smash the popcorn, you're gonna need some water, right, to wash that down or a beer, whatever you want. And you're gonna want that to not travel places and make a mess. The back lounge here, you know, the people, the best seats in this particular cinema where there actually are seats are gonna be kind of either side of this thing. And where do you put your drink? So I guess you could put a little, little platform across there, but you know, where do you put your arms? I, I don't know. So yeah, just, just sort of missing the epic focus that the sound can deliver is, is a real shame on this one. Yeah, beautiful dynamic star ceiling. Now the thing is when you talk about budgets, right? You gotta learn where to skew it. Some people are gonna be more about the look, uh, that's cool. And others are gonna be more about the AV. And that's cool. But remember, if you go more for one or the other, it, it's chewing up budget every single time. So star ceilings can be like, you know, two to $5,000 really, really easily, uh, particularly for a room this big, uh, particularly if you don't, don't want to drill it out and DIY it. So yeah, love star ceilings, but not if it means missing out on a second subwoofer, because uh, two subs are awesome. Because really when you watch the movie, what, what do you do with all this um, feature lighting in this room? you turn it off. So again, we gotta, gotta kind of weigh that up. Uh, what's it there for? But it's a beautiful room, beautiful looking room. So you got this nice soft plush look at the back. It's got some nice texture to it. Though again, quite a, a solid tight fabric. So the ability for speakers to be placed down at ear level, not happening. Uh, it looks like they've got some speakers up here. At least they've painted them. It looks really weird when you have a dark ceiling and they put like a white grill on it. It's a bit, bit silly. So these guys, you know, got a beautiful aesthetic. Yeah, again, surround speakers are firing down. They're going to be firing across the room. They're actually, surround channels uh, should be either side or just behind, maybe just behind the main row, and firing across the room. That's how the technology works. And that hasn't changed. It's been like that since like 1993, man. Dolby AC3, which is the first version of Dolby Digital 5.1. Um, they fire across, it's nothing new to know. Uh, good lighting here though on the on the riser, so that's good. Generous size platform at the back. Because they weren't recliner seats, you know, even if you're laid right out, you maybe that riser could have gone back a little bit further, so then there wouldn't be so much disparity of, of screen size from these front row to the back row. Um, also maybe, um, you know, this person really is only like this front left seat. They're only really going to hear the front left speaker and a bit of the center, very little of the right. And with the speakers at the back firing down, not much surround sound. So sonically not too good, right? Not too good. So it's really, it's really hard to, you got to play some tricks to get the image off the screen. Otherwise you get high exposure. You can see from the angles here, there's a little bit of reflection, even at this angle, bit of reflection off that, um, that bench top and a lot of reflection off here. So um, even though it's darker, you gotta go super low sheen to eliminate some of that. But with, with the camera doing this, it's definitely exaggerating what's happening there. So it's not, not too brutal. The color choice is generally, I, I dig it. It's those darker, warmer tones. Love that candy stash. Yep, nice lamps, lamps are good, nice sexy lighting, and the light's not getting on the screen, which is good. So it's important to have lights over the seats or around the seats, which are narrow in focus, so that light does not end up on the screen, polluting the screen. Any light that ends up on the screen that isn't from the projector is gonna wash it out, make it look more dull and murky and just not very bright and snappy. And that's not a home cinema room, I'm sure. Uh, oh, here we go, here's another one. Um, so they've spent about 32 grand. Microwave popcorn, very convenient, but seriously guys, get the real popcorn, take the effort, the difference in flavor is just phenomenal. And you can throw a sprinkle of brown sugar in there. Um, olive oil is a nice one to go with, nice crack of pink rock salt. A little bit more effort. Look, I, I pull out the microwave popcorn sometimes as well, but go go for the fresh stuff. You'd be amazed. You just get used to the, the normal things, like the easy things. But yeah, just get a big saucepan, whip it out. Smells amazing. 
so beautiful. All right, <laughs> I'm picky on our popcorn, but it's, it's true, right? It's an important element. Sort of, yeah, light, light, interesting colored curtains, um, white lounge. That's cool. I guess you're sitting on it. You're not, not really seeing it so much, but the back row, we're going to be, the projector screen is going to illuminate these white seats. So, you know, the mystery of feeling like you're in the movie, every time it's a bright scene, um, which is often, you're actually going to remember that you're sitting inside a theater room and not in the movie. Let's have a look. Oh, yeah, it looks like they had a bit more space to play with, though. It looks like a deeper room. A deeper room can only be a good thing. Um, oh, look at that. So they've gone for three rows in this one. Can you see that here? Oh, they're in the... Oh, yeah, yeah, three rows. Look at that. Three rows, quite small tiered seating. That only looks like 150 mil per rise. So again, sight lines. Don't know if that back row is going to be able to see the full screen back there. So I find it quite common that a tiered level could be a foot in height it depends on how big the screen is how low it is from the ground you just got to engineer it in just got to measure it up work it out let's see nice decor oh look at that beautiful drinks candy those little owl style what are they called table tray things to the rescue so if you've got a lounge sneak that alongside and you've got you've got you know, what you need. You need all the little munchies and that nearby, and it should be in a pretty safe spot there. You should be able to bump that too easily. So, yeah, really cool. Definitely need that. Look at that. You've got some beautiful little um, tables in the middle there. The issue here, though, um, is, you know, we're, we're pushing the seats wider and wider and wider um, with that petition, and the seating more center of the room will sound and work better. So we actually often work with cinema seats that are, are quite a little bit more on the compact side, um, still with arms, still with the, the table tray, still with the cup holder, still with the recliner, but a little bit more narrow. We get more people inside the sweet spot for the sound. Um, looks like they might not have got automation into this one. So there's a couple of remote controls kicking around. That, what is that? That looks like a speaker grill. Hopefully, Hopefully they've watered down the paint before they paint the grill Because if the paint blocks the holes in the grill Yeah, not good for sound at all It just looks pretty dense So it's quite small though. So I don't know if that's the front speaker um, Okay, that's all we saw of that one There might be another one on the other other page so yeah groovy look um, love the RGB lighting that adds lots of excitement to the room again don't know where the surround speakers are probably in the ceiling again probably firing down into the corners of the room where, where no one can hear them um, and I'm a bit harsh though if I'm not harsh who is right okay check these dudes out full-size Iron Man you got to get points for that um, it's got some oh, cool some bladed style ceiling that's pretty neat but it's pretty reflective, it's pretty light. So, you know, you're gonna cop a bit of reflection from that. Bench top at the front, further distance. So the likelihood of the projector lighting up that bench height and distracting you so much is less, though it is white. Um, these, certainly the opportunity, see the center speaker here, that could be much higher, much higher because, you know, we want really the front speakers all around ear level, slightly higher. Or, or maybe up to up to the middle of the screen height. So probably two things here. I mean, I haven't seen the seats in this room yet, but this screen's maybe a little bit higher than it needs to be. It could come down a little bit. I mean, I, I love I love looking right into the middle of the screen. So that you know, depend, again, depends how big the screen is. My screen's like almost 1.6 meters tall by 3.7, almost 3.8 meters wide in in full scope. Um, it, thinking that's bloody big, it's 160 inches. Um, and we sit 3.5 meters from that. That's our viewing distance. And some people are like, what, that, that must be too big. It is, it is awesome. And if you've actually been to a commercial cinema, that's what it's like in a commercial cinema, sitting around the kind of middle, the front of the middle section, not the front section, in that middle front, uh, like the, you know, where you sit on the landing, 
and there's the middle section on one side and then there's everything else. So it's sort of like the front portion of that mid to back section. Um, that's where a lot of people hang out. I see, I pay attention. I see that's where a lot of people hang out when they go to a commercial cinema. That's what we did in our room. You can go, you can go really big, 100 inches and 110 inch screens we see going all the time. And there's no reason for it other than it's like a, it's a magic number. Oh, I need 100 watts. I need 100 inches. You know, it's like, it's just, it's a magic number. Um, conceptually, it doesn't actually result to any reference viewing angles and things like that. I wonder if there's information on screen size here. I wonder if that's a drop screen. No, it looks fixed. There's no point putting a drop screen in a dedicated cinema. You're wasting your money. And they flop around. They're not as good. I mean, there's some, some very good ones. But they cost more than a fixed screen. And if what you do in the cinema is to watch the screen, then why have it retract away? So I, I'm not sure if that other one was or not. This one's obviously fixed, which is cool. Nice velvet background. A darker wall around it. That's good for high contrast. Some deep red there. That's sort of cool. Uh, maybe, you know, I may is not contrasting that as much as he could, but hey, I'm not the interior designer. Um, I'm more the engineer, but we, we certainly learned to blend both. The, yes, yeah, so that center channel, where was I? The screen come down a little bit and, and the center channel up. Now, you would have heard me say the center channel is is like a, like the top of that would be like a bench top and it'd be close to the screen. That's the problem. Well, you tilt, tilt the project, sorry, the center speaker up, doing two things, it's now aiming where your ears are, always aim and monitor the speakers, and two, um, that reflection gets bounced away from you. So we get away with that. Which means if you do have a bench top right next to a projector screen, you, you could literally kick it up five degrees and almost eliminate all of that reflection. So, you know, things can be done. So, yeah, so these speakers could be, could be what we call towed in, so angled in a little bit to give a bit more focus. At least, hang on, at least I can see the speakers in this job. The other one, I was trying to look for them before. Where's the front of this room? Can't see it. Hmm, oh, I don't know. That could be, that could be a front speaker. It's quite little. Anyway, um, Let's see. All right, next screen. Let's have a look. Oh, right. Okay. Sort of, sort of looks like an '80s bedroom in a way. Which I nothing wrong with that. I reckon that's cool. Got the popcorn machine, some art, the bar fridge. Now that talking about distractions. I hope that bar fridge light can turn off. I'm sure it can. But if you're watching a movie and the bloody bar fridge light is just beaming at you that's going to be a pain. But otherwise, if that can be turned off and the only light in the room is from the projector screen, then it's hiding in the shadows. It's actually, you know, it actually works. What's the cabinetry? You know, cabinetry costs a fair bit of money, right? So if you're limited on a budget, like just strip back on the cabinetry and spend some money on a big amp, right? Like when you sit down and press play, who cares about the cabinetry? Like, like, let's let's have some impactful, bloody good sound. That's what I want. What's the point of the room otherwise? But you know, if, if people love storage, you know what, the amount of times people go, yeah, I want storage, we build cabinets and they use like not even half of it. So I mean, seriously, I, I'm like, yeah, you want storage? Tell me what you're gonna put in it and we'll, and we'll do that. Oh, I just like storage. It's like, well, you also need powerful sound. All right, so hey, so these, the other thing is as well, it's like kind of tunneled back. It's like a nook where the, the pitch is tunneled back. So I would imagine, again, you're going to get reflection points visually on this sort of gray silver paneling. Um, so that's just, you're going to have the screen and then you're going to have a halo just pop. And you've got good peripheral vision all the way out here. You know, we see quite wide. So... These are, it's kind of like a halo kind of glowing. And what's really weird when the, when you have an image crossing the screen, like um, like a shot, like, you know, someone, someone a car might be moving in front of, um, say, the, the sun in the background. So there's a shadow 
created across the room and then that shadow projects onto the side of the wall and then you have like movement outside of the screen that might sound cool but that's distracting and it's not what the director wanted so that's that's not going to work the other thing as well is this speaker now is is just going to be it's like it's you got a, a, a something right next to it see my voice without a barrier next to it my voice with a barrier next to it it sounds different so these speakers are going to be kind of loaded up sound a little bit could be a bit weird it could be an opportunity to add some acoustic control in there to manage that that can be done but i can't see any of that there towing in will help a little bit and yeah man that center channel you can bring that right up it would sound heaps better okay what else we got lots of candy lots of candy bar fridge not only i'm sure the lights can turn off right it's for the photo shoot but it needs to be quiet as well. Because some, some of these little fridges are pretty noisy and they have that like humming noise and it's just a great cinema room is a quiet cinema room. Low noise. So all the little details come through. Not mm, bloody fridge. Um, pretty good popcorn machine by the looks. They've got a proper kettle there. So they're going to be serving up some good stuff. I like it. All right. Oh, and here's how to how to execute great yeah let's check that out all right now we'll go to another uh, web page i think ah here we go here we go so that's that other job okay so they are the speakers in the front now oh my lord they put a pot plant in front of the speaker <laughs> come on guys <laughs> We used to joke about this stuff. Still happens. All right. Yeah, you can't. You won't. You won't get good sound if there's like something in front of your speaker. So yeah, don't do that. I know it looks good. I get it. That's why you need the engineer. You need the designer, and they need to work together. Um, the other thing is like there's an image beyond the screen here, so they've either not position the speaker the projector in the right spot to get the lens set up correctly or they just haven't finished zooming it in or something but you'd think for the photo shoot they would have got that right um so that's a shame yeah wow but you know the the speakers are uh, geometry wise i guess placed okay but i mean the center channel has to be under the screen because it can't go through it higher tech screens and systems certainly do um, but these could have been a little bit higher as long as they don't you don't want to go outside 10 degrees So if we go across from the center to this, uh, what's that the left speaker? That's zero and then up 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 until we get about 10 degrees. That's that, that 10 degrees is about the limit of, um, of, of it, How you separate the left the center and the right or the left and right from the center if you go the left and right really high and the center really low you, you lose that um, seamless um, connection of the sound and it kind of breaks down and all the time in cinema you have like a bus going zoom across the room that bus is going to go left center right and if it goes zoom up here then down there then over there and that's like your like, head's like what's going on it, it, it breaks the illusion um, you want to be in that willing suspension of disbelief as they say you know, to believe in the unbelievable so we got to trick ourselves into believing this stuff's real uh, the other issue with the speaker is, you know, it, again, it's right next to a barrier. So the speaker is like sitting above a ledge. So there's going to be a lot of, um, potentially a lot of interference with that. Haven't seen any subwoofers. I hope they've not put a sub in a cabinet with a solid door. That's just, I mean, yeah, the noise of the sub will get out of that because it's, you know, it's low end energy, but it would be, disgustingly distorted probably rattle the cabinet rattle the equipment you know they if 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 the door had like a grill like a cloth or fabric uh, open acoustic fabric and then you you can wad around the subwoofer with some um like um foam or acoustic wadding big thick blanket in a basic term that could even be okay but you know one like an acoustic 
uh, foam in and around the subwoofer box. So these 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 there's no vibration and noise and then the energy is straight out, out of the, the fabric grill. That works, but man, I'm freaking out here because if they're all solid panels and I've put a sub in there, yeah, no, nah, not good, not good, not good. That's just, I don't know, thought logical. Oh, it looks like they got some automation, that's cool. Um, what, I, what I prefer is if you're gonna have a fancy touch screen in your cinema room, then how often do you use it? You walk in the room, you turn the lights on, and then you sit in the seat and use the remote. And then when you leave the room, you might turn the lights off. Maybe if it's a good controller, it can turn the whole system off. But like you don't stand near the door controlling your system, right? So I, I prefer... A, a, an iPad, because you can get the apps and things on them for automation. In a nice, you get these beautiful alloy um, sleeves and a magnet. We'll probably get some B-roll on this if we if we do a fancy version of this video. But we, um, you get a, a capacitance charge magnet. The iPad lives there on the, on the wall, on entry of the room. Beautiful, I always put a keypad in as well because that never goes, ever goes walkabout. Um, but you can use the iPad, you can turn the lights on and stuff, but guess what? Then you just take it off the wall, walk to the seat, happy days. You got full control. And then when you finish up, boom, straight back on the wall, it charges up, it's there for next time. Um, Cause you know, you can pay like a thousand bucks for these touchscreen things. And then, you know, what do you actually use it for? It's like you walk, you walk past it for like five seconds. So I want, I want the fancy touchscreen in my lap, you know, not on the wall. Um, yeah, yeah, there's that speaker. Oh, it's, it's not behind the pot plant, it's behind that, the pot plant, at least being stalky, some sound would get past it. So um, if they calibrated, I hope they, they probably didn't calibrate, but you know, well they actually have a little microphone thing with the amps these days, and it's like an auto EQ system, and, um, it, it, it tries to tune up the sound. Unfortunately, I, I got a bunch of er errors in them, but there's lots of videos about that. So, um, but yeah, if, if they try and tune the system and that's in the way, EQ ain't gonna fix that. Like, you need the environment to be good. The EQ is just a little touch up. It's like the little touch up at the end. It doesn't fix things like surround speakers firing into the back corners onto the ground in the back. If, if you know, that's where the dog sits, the dog gets good surround sound. And then and then if you do do successfully EQ the system and then put that in front of it, well, you're even further away. Let's have a look at the next one. I like that, nice little L style um, for, your, for your nibblies. Oh yeah, so we've seen this stuff. Okay, so we got to see a little bit more of that room which we missed out on last time. Okay. That room was seen, that room was seen. Ah, oh, here we go. Wonder where that went. Don't know which system that was. It looks like that's too high up to be that system, but um, okay, a little two-way in-wall speakers. Definitely on a budget, That's if you, and if you can, easily put speakers in the wall. In WA, where I'm from, it's like brick, so good luck with that. It's a, it's, it's, it's a bit tricky. But yeah, the Jiprock style wall. Yeah, at least you're not paying for speaker boxes. You use the wall instead, so that's a, a good idea. But they're only a little two-way, little five-inch driver. They they might hit, you know, moderate levels. But they're not going to be like. It's not going to sound like it's a real cinema. They have enough output, you know. Tweeters at the bottom. That's probably a good idea if ear level is is slightly under that. Um, okay. Oh, that's that room. Where's, hang on, if that's, if that's the center speaker and the screen is there, how does the sound get through the screen? Yeah, that's a little bit, it's a little bit weird, that one. All right, now what was the other, what was the other thing we had here? Home center, a few basic rules, okay. So I'm just gonna, look, I'm just gonna check in on this because this is the advice that tens or hundreds of thousands of people were getting. And 
as professionally trained person in the industry for a long, long time. And look, I've been through the mistakes, right? I've gone through the bullshit. I've followed what the manufacturers think are good and did things the wrong way. So it's, I, I, get, I get why these things can um, go wrong. So let's see if there's some... Da -da 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 -da. Definitely a great place for people to come together. Agreed. Fits. Make sure it fits the purpose intended. Absolutely. Um, think about how the space can be used when you're not screening a movie. That's true. It could be a sitting room, a music room. So having it lighter and brighter can be important for people, right? So you don't need to build a black hole, uh, although that would be the best performing movie room. Um, you know, it, you do want to think about how the real estate works. So let's have a look here. Site, um, the images, it's always, it was always about the big screen going out to the cinemas, proper big. Um, so a large screen TV is not big enough, agreed, so it means projection, absolutely. So we want to, well actually, here's, here's some math, here's some real stuff to work on. 45 degree angle, so from your primary or your main seating position, 45 degree angle out to wherever the wall is or where the screen's intended to be. Boom, that's reference cinema sizes. Which means if you're three and a half meters away, you need like a screen that's about ah, 2.8 meters wide to three meters wide. Which means all of these rooms are definitely under reference level because you know they're obviously not that big of screens. Um, Problem with big, big, big screens is powering them up. You need more projector power. Um, and then when you want deeper, um, fuller color, that requires more power as well. So it, it's look, it's no easy feat to ha hit reference level cinema standards. Um, I get that. Uh, the screen is important, not just the projector, absolutely. When you think about it, the actual screen is the only thing you look at in the whole cinema when you hit play. Yes, we see the light projected off it from the projector, but it's actually the only thing you actually look at physically. So, um, yes, good. And it looks like everyone went for a nice vinyl, stretch vinyl um, screen, which is good. They haven't kind of painted the wall, so that's a really good thing to see. Sound, major part of the cinematic experience. Well, you know what? Um, I find most people visit our showroom and they're like, a lot of them think, hey, I want great video. Right? Most people are very visual. I want great video. And they see very quickly that, you know what? Video is good. Like these days, video can be done really well. Tick. But with that, they also have a chance to hear a really great sound because we have good equipment set up in an acoustically optimized room with great seating position. And they always say, I love the picture. And by the way, the sound is really important to me. Particularly when you hear great sound, you like go, oh my gosh, this is, okay, I need, I need that. Um, you have to be very pragmatic the way you design the sound system, because we run some, we have some cinemas with like one row of seats, 23 different speakers in the room. And that's, you know, it's a pretty high end job. They've got high quality everything. So I'm like, good on you, add more speakers. <laughs> but. In, in most cinemas, we, we got it. We got to be careful with how many speakers we run because every time we add another speaker, we're watering down the budget. We want quality over quantity, of course. So um, definitely agreed with the sound quality. I love that. Um, surround sound with a good subwoofer is essential. Yeah, like like particularly these little speakers, in the bass coming out of those. So absolutely, subs are essential. Even if you had big speakers, they're really hard to manage the bass. So by um, electronically managing where the sound goes and sending that information to a sub, and a sub in a good position. If you just throw the sub in the corner of the room, it's gonna like just boom out and have all these peaks and nulls and cancellation points. It's chaotic. And I say that for, sm for cinema rooms. In a commercial cinema, they're big enough where they don't have this, um, this effect. So it's actually a unique challenge to us in small rooms with this whole base knocking itself out thing. So yeah, you want a good subwoofer, but you want a good subwoofer in a good spot. You need to sit in a good spot to feel the impact of the base as well. Um, 
uh, and make sure any extra sounds are cut out. I'm not sure what that means. It means oh, sound deadening panels. Pa panels. And the ceiling curtains can be good. Make the room as dead as possible. Okay, that's that's not true. So, if the room was totally dead and was surrounded by just you know cotton wool, and the sound system played in that, it just have it would lack a it would lack power. Because they just, because we actually hear this, believe it or not, we actually listen 70% of the sound we hear when we're in a room um, is actually the reflected sound. We only hear 30% of it is the sound direct from the speaker. So if I'm talking to someone in a room, 70% of what they're hearing of me is actually the reflections of the room. Now, the studios are not absolutely dead rooms, commercial cinemas are not absolutely dead rooms. They have reflections that have some liveliness in them. Now, those reflections are managed, so they're controlled, but they aren't dead. So um, if the studio is not dead and a commercial cinema is not dead, then the playback system in your home shouldn't be dead either. So as dead as possible, no. And a lot of these rooms uh, were missing critical areas they could have made more dead. And the thing with curtains is they have a narrow band in which they operate. So some of the sound, the curtains are really effective of taking that out. And if you put curtains everywhere, then that you've got what could be the natural sound, and then you've got the natural sound with a big dip at a certain frequency, and it's just gone. And you just don't hear any of that particular sound, and it's completely distorted what you are meant to listen to. So the acoustics in the room should be managing quite a wide range of sound from the highs to the mids, highs to the mids to the lows. And should be doing that evenly. And we want some scattering in the room. So we want some sound to actually scatter and radiate so it sounds much bigger than what the room really is. So if we deaden it, you're going to end up with a, a very focused sound, but a very small sound. It's not going to sound very big. Um, uh, any sound insulation in the walls and ceiling to keep the movie's noise from leaking into other areas of the home? Absolutely. Absolutely. So two things. You don't want noise coming into the room. The laundry is nearby. You don't want to hear that washing machine kicking in. You don't want people walking up and down the hallway and the sound getting into, say, the double doors that are tiled hallway and you've got double doors with gaps in them and the sound, you know, you can hear people walking and you're trying to enjoy a show. Not cool. You, you want to remember you're in your own little escape world. So, yeah, we're going to seal up the doors. And doors are usually the missing link. There's air gaps everywhere. So we seal them up. That, that's quite a significant um, dropping in sound. Also, you know, if the speakers are in the wall, then that's adding a lot of energy into the wall. And that will transfer to other rooms easily. So that needs to be done delicately. Otherwise, you're actually causing problems. So to fully sound isolate the room can cost a lot of money. You've got to basically build another room in a room. Double doors and it could be like 30 grand to really nail it for a, say, four by five meter room with one door. Okay. The When we're installing a cinema, we want to not make things worse and try and make things a little bit better with the common construction we have. So maybe an on-wall speaker with uh, what we call resilient mount mounts, so like rubber brackety things, to make sure that that speaker's energy doesn't get into the wall. To start with, that's good. Um, another thing is with those mounts is it also allows the speaker to operate in its more natural way. Um, if you have the wall attached to the speaker, then the speaker the wall, rather, becomes an extension of the speaker's character of sound. Imagine a guitar, right? An acoustic guitar, and then you L bracket a MDF panel to the side of it. The thing's going to sound different. So speakers are an instrument. You want to keep them natural and pure. So absolutely sound deadening. I love that. Um, great surround sound makes you feel like you're in the action. 100%. 100%. And the other thing is, you should be able to turn up. Maybe we go, how much power do you need, right? We put extraordinary amount of power into systems. When they're low noise, then we get a natural, clean, 
clear sound. Power is about driving clarity. And it sounds more simple. It sounds more comfortable. It sounds effortless. That's the sound we want. When an amplifier is trying to drive sound and it doesn't have a lot of power, it, it, it distorts. It's a bit like trying to ride a bike up a hill, right? Trying to ride, trying to ride, trying to ride higher, 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 be like higher sound levels and your legs are just giving up on you, man. Fatigue. And that comes through when the amplifier is fatiguing, the speaker's fatigue. Also, if you don't have speakers that handle good power, they have what they call power compression, where the power is warming up the speakers because all that energy doesn't just go into sound. It also goes into heat. And when the drivers heat up, they become less efficient. They don't produce as much sound. And then the homeowner goes, I'll turn up the volume more. They turn up the volume more. The amp distorts more. That doesn't sound nice. It can actually damage the speaker. The speaker is compressing. The system just will not play very loud for very long in that instance. So you need, need good power to really drive it home. These little systems that I've installed, they're going to have a lot of fun with that. My thing is, if they had some good engineering advice, they would have got more value for their money with the same equipment or similar equipment. And that's what I really like to see. Seating, well, that's the biggest touch point, other than maybe the remote control. You know, these are the things you interact with. Seating, remote control, sit back, food and drinks nearby. Uh, so functionality, a lot of people like the function of the cinema chair recliner, but personally, I hate what that looks like. Okay. I'm all about the aesthetic. Okay, well, that's going to be potentially a major compromise, right? All about the aesthetic? Isn't there a rule where they say form follows function? I think there is. It's got the look. So it's got the um, look. It's got, it's got to look good. And I wanted to create a room that felt like a gold class cinema experience, but at the same time connected with the rest of the home. But if the rest of your home looks like a gold class cinema, then that works. Occasional chairs. Uh, I mean, so we went for occasional chairs, ottoman at the lowest level. And a riser, so everyone had a great view. Um, they were the comfiest, so you could immediately walk into the room, lay back on the couch, and I think this is heaven until there all day. So which ones are the comfiest? I find, I mean, I've got a, a, another, i got the proper cinema room, and yes, we have recline. When you're reclining, and you're supported beautifully, and you kind of feel like you're almost floating, I can tell you, the sound and picture becomes more e um, epic because you're losing one of those senses, you're using, losing the sense of kind of gravity and weight and that floaty feeling. I feel like I haven't been in a float tank, I've been meaning to, but everyone talks about how when you're sort of floating there, your other senses sort of um, highlighted. So that that's the same with a great recliner. Um, no, this is a personal taste rack, so I'd totally, you know, go for the look, that's fine. Though, these are major, major, major benefit to the recliners. Plus, the cup holders are there. You got the cup holder there. You got the candy thing there. You're floating, easy days. Um, I don't want to reach. I don't want to get off my seat to grab my cup, or grab a, a biscuit. That that's like that's annoying, right? That's so maybe the comfort's not so good. But I got another room. We got like a um, like a lounge style um, AV system. It's pretty cool. Um, it's another concept where we've been working on and and my lounge my beloved lounge that I've had for many years is in there and we've watched a few movies in there to compare the AV and a bunch of TV and I can tell you that lounge as nice as it is I just start slumping and slumping and slumping and slumping and I'm like Arr! and I'm trying to find a better spot to sit after a period of time so yeah I don't know two hours three hours some movies are going to three hours a lot of sports, three hours, absolutely need the function of what the seats are all about. And look, if your day lounge thing works for you, then, then that's cool. But remember, with this one I critiqued before, best seat in the house is where there's no seaters. Audio visual wise, um, it's a real, it's a, it's a bit of a shame. But you know, she said the aesthetic's more important, so they've, they've hit that target. We're not dominating the entire floor space with flix, fixed recliners, with less than space for boardrooms. Okay, that's cool, I get that now to read and just relax. 
getting the most in terms of function out of every seat that you can. Well, it's a pity all those seats suck for sound and pitch hole. So um, that's a pain. But don't don't get me wrong. Who was it? Was it Georgia? If you ever see this, right, I get it, right? So there you go. Yeah, you, you're designing for what you need and want. I'm about the cinematic experience. So when people see this, they go, that's how I have to do a cinema. Sound and picture, it's actually, it's, it's, it's not where it's at. Okay, surround, okay, surround. Character that ties into the rest of the house. Personally, I think a cinema room should be standalone. I mean, I don't know how many people make the carport look like the living area. Like the carport has concrete, it has exposed brick, it has basic cupboards there. It functions as a carport. It works as a carport. It looks like a carport. So look, those people want a cinema room that has the same look and feel as the rest of the house and that's most important to them. Tick, let's work with that. But just know that that value, I think should be challenged and considered on what the room actually requires. And I think th these rooms should be special. This room should be something different to the rest of the house. That's that's the whole point of it. Um, yep, lolly, lollies and fun things like that. Lolly draw, fun stuff. Storage, you can never have enough storage. Yeah, well, I didn't see everyone use it all the time. And you know, if this is your cinema budget, this is a big one for you guys, because I know usually the guys, not always, but often, they want more audio visual. And then if the cabinet budget comes in, that can, man, that can wipe out five or 10 grand on your AV budget real quick and have zero functionality for the movie. So be careful of that, right? Um, but yeah, everyone's got their preferences. So I'm just, I'm on, on the camp for great movie experience. Is apparently what these rooms are for, okay? Awesome. They've done pretty well, right? I mean, they look cool. They've got what they wanted. I think some better guidance on AV engineering could just give them a better blend of the aesthetic and the actual performance of the room. And um, they, they would have got something, I think, a lot better. Um, there's certainly a few concerns with speakers and surround speakers not in the right location. Even concern with some of the front stage speakers being covered up by paint or pot plants or screens. It's a combination of that. A lot of big cabinetry up the front causing reflection issues. You know, you're spending big money on things that are detracting from the experience. So look, it's tough, right? We want to have a sexy room. We want a unique room and we want it to work. It is tricky. And, you know, we see all the time just how much that can be compromised. So I thought I'd have a little bit of a look at this. Throw my two cents worth in. Um, I hope you've learned something from that. Just getting a perspective from a really a professional cinema design. So you don't just see these rooms as oh, these these must be done properly. Um, they're, they're, you know, they're an amateur um, level of, of AV fit out. So guys, I hope that's been value. Check out for more inspiration, education, uh, and more cool stuff about real performance cinema in your own home. Check out our website, our YouTube, Instagram, all those places, and you better see how to absolutely nail it and get it right. Uh, and for those that love real reference cinema, yes, we get into some high-end, cutting-edge, ultimate technology, so you can see what's actually possible today. And yeah, home cinemas are an ultimate dream machine. They are rivaling the temptation to buy that Aston Martin or that Ferrari. You can throw the same sort of bucks into a cinema and I can tell you it will blow your socks off and you can fit more than two people in that. All right, guys. Hope that's been valued. Catch you later. Bye.